Different countries have different types of legal system, variously described as legal families or legal origins. This is useful to know in its own right, but what are the consequences of legal origin? In a series of articles, Rafael Laporta and co-authors have argued that legal origin can explain patterns in the economy of a country. Broadly, the claims are that, compared to other systems, common law systems are more likely to protect outside investors, are less associated with government intervention in product and labour markets, and have lower judicial formalism and higher judicial independence. Obviously, these outcomes are primarily economic in nature, but they're also political. Political parties of left and right disagree over how extensively to intervene in product and labour markets. And the idea that these things are driven not by political competition, but by the law, is potentially controversial. The problem with these claims is that they are all made on the basis of observational data. In an ideal world, we would be able to randomise. We'd get a group of countries and we'd randomly assign some to have a common law system and others to have a code law system. Perhaps for the best, social scientists never have that degree of power. And so we have to look at patterns across countries as they actually exist. But one of the problems when doing this kind of observational social science is that there can be lots of potential causes of some outcomes. And those potential causes might themselves be related. One of the strongest criticisms of these claims about legal origins is that it, it's not actually legal origins that's doing the work, but rather colonial origins. As Clarman and colleagues put it, former colonies generally received their legal system from the country that colonised them, meaning that colonial and legal origin overlap. In particular, no former British colony now has a civil law system and no French or other continental European colony now has a common law system. If you try and build a statistical model of investor protection or government intervention, you can get a statistically significant effect of legal origin, but this effect tends to disappear when you also include colonial origin in your model. The idea that former French colonies have different attitudes to investor protection and government intervention when compared to former British colonies, well, that seems much less controversial. After all, colonial origins affected lots of things. We might even say it would be surprising if these experiences of colonialism didn't have long-lasting effects on economic outcomes.